Now, are you considering a literature-based dissertation but you're not 100% convinced about it? Maybe you're not totally clear on what a literature-based dissertation actually is or how it's any different from a standard dissertation. Well, keep watching because in this video I'll tell you what a literature-based dissertation is and I'll explain these four reasons why you should certainly consider one. It avoids the logistical issues and it minimises the ethical considerations associated with research-based dissertations. It opens up a wider range of topics to you and it provides you with much more time flexibility than a research-based dissertation. I'm Dr Elizabeth Yardley and I have supervised many, many students who've done literature-based dissertations. There is a lot of confusing advice out there about them, so that's why they're one of the key things that I want to make videos about on this channel. And I am so glad that you're here, so let's crack on. First up, we need to get clear on what a literature-based dissertation actually is. I explain this in a lot more detail in this video right here, so check that out if you want a longer description, but let's go through a quick summary now. In a literature-based dissertation, your entire dissertation is a literature review. As I always say, it is a big, bad, pumped, supercharged literature review. You take your research question and you do a thorough, critical, strategic review of the literature around that question. Your original contribution to knowledge, or where you fill the gap, is with the new insights into your topic that you generate as a result of that critical synthesis of the existing literature. It helps to think of your literature-based dissertation like making a lovely piece of crochet. You draw upon different strands and different threads of the existing literature, some of which may never have been connected before. You crochet them all together to create new, innovative insights into your topic. Here is the structure of a literature-based dissertation, and there are a couple of things you need to notice about it. Thing number one, they don't have a chapter called the literature review, because the entire thing is a literature review. It doesn't make any sense to have a literature review chapter inside a literature-based dissertation. Instead, you will have a series of themed chapters, usually between three and five, each of them critically examining a specific area of the literature. You draw them all together to answer your research question, to provide those new insights into your topic. Thing two, Literature-based dissertations do not have a separate methodology chapter either. Instead, your introduction chapter will include a section in it where you provide an overview of your approach to your dissertation, explaining your strategy for finding and critically reviewing the literature. Now we're clear on what a literature-based dissertation is, let's move on to look at those four key benefits of doing a dissertation like this. But before we do, if you are finding this video helpful, hit that like button because it really does make a huge difference in ensuring that other people can find it too. And I am super keen that other people do find this video because there is so much confusion out there about literature-based dissertations. So liking this video is the one teeny tiny thing that you can do to help other students just like you understand literature-based dissertations a little bit better. Okay, then let's start examining the four main benefits of a literature-based dissertation. First up, it avoids the logistical issues associated with research-based dissertations. When you are doing a research study, especially one that depends on other human beings actually doing something for you, like completing your questionnaire or doing an interview or a focus group with you, there are certain risks that come with that. Namely, that people won't do these things. Participants can withdraw or not turn up in the first place. Questionnaires can go unanswered. You might be relying on someone to get you access to a group of participants or a set of documents for that matter. A gatekeeper, essentially. And everything seems to be going fine and they've agreed to do it and it's all lovely. But what happens if they kind of ghost you? They stop replying to your emails, they go off sick from their job. All of that stuff can happen, and it has happened in research projects. It's happened to me, it's happened to my colleagues, it's happened to the students that I've supervised. You might find yourself having to come up with a plan B, and a plan C, and a plan D. It might be that the thing you want to do, no matter how much you think you've thought it through about what might go wrong and planned accordingly, is just not doable once you get into it. Unanticipated things happen, and that can create a lot of stress with research-based dissertations. 
that's not going to happen with a literature-based dissertation because the only human that you are relying on is yourself. Essentially, you don't have any participants. And that brings me on to the next point. It minimizes the challenges of ethical approval. So ethical approval is essentially the process that your college or university uses to make sure the research that its staff and students do respect people's rights and freedoms and minimizes the risk of harm to participants and researchers. This involves checking that people are able to give their informed consent to participate in the research, that their privacy is respected, that they know what will happen to their data, etc. When you have no participants, as is the case with a literature-based dissertation, the ethical side of things is not quite so extensive. In some universities, you might not even need to apply for ethical approval for a literature-based dissertation. Now, it's important to note that I'm not saying that the ethical considerations are non-existent in literature-based dissertations. They are simply less extensive. You still need to be mindful of ethical issues, like your own well-being. For example, many of my past students have done literature-based dissertations on topics like homicide, rape, domestic abuse, sexual violence. Reading a lot of literature about sensitive topics like that can be quite distressing, to say the least. So you'll need to consider how you're going to look after yourself if that applies to you. And that kind of brings us on to point three, because literature based dissertations enable you to choose a topic where a primary research study is never going to be approved by any ethics committee. I have lost count of the number of students who wanted to do a criminology dissertation about serial homicide and they wanted to go and interview serial killers or write to them and get them to fill in a questionnaire. <laughs> that is not happening. You are not Clarice Starling. Now most of you won't even know who that is which makes me feel kind of old. Anyway, also this relates to any research focusing upon children or vulnerable adults. It's a shame to throw topics like these in the bin if it's something that you are genuinely interested in and passionate about. Literature-based dissertations give you an opportunity to still study these topics, but do it in a different way. And if you want to go on to do more research on that same topic, having done a literature-based dissertation on it, you are in an incredibly strong position when it comes to knowing your stuff, because you will know this topic like the back of your hand. If the tips I've shared so far are going to help you make progress in your dissertation, take a moment to hit that subscribe button because I have a lot more videos just like this one on the way. Lastly, a literature-based dissertation offers a much more flexible timetable than a research-based one. In a research-based dissertation, there are milestones that you need to hit. You need to secure ethical approval. You need to do your data collection in a particular time frame. You need to ensure that you have X number of responses or you've done X number of interviews by a certain date. Your dissertation journey is mapped out. There are time windows in which you have to get specific things done. In a literature-based dissertation, it is much less constrained. You can have periods where you hunker down and work on it intensively for hours, days, weeks even, and then you can take your foot off the gas for a while. As long as you are working on it regularly, you can get it done by the submission date, all good. Some people like to work in bursts when they feel like it and then take a step back. And that is actually the way that I work. And that is absolutely fine. But that can be a problem with a research-based dissertation because if you're in a period where you're really not feeling it, but you're having to force yourself to work on it because there's a milestone you need to hit, that ain't good. The flexibility in a literature-based dissertation can work well for you if you have an unpredictable job or side hustle, if you have caring responsibilities for children or relatives, if you have a fluctuating health condition of your own. All of these things do not sit very well with a fairly rigid research timetable. There might be a lot of noise in your life and you can't always predict what's going to happen and when it's going to happen and when you'll need to put your attention elsewhere. So that might be another reason to consider a literature-based dissertation. So those are the four key benefits of a literature-based dissertation. But before I bring this video to a close, I want to say one important thing. I am not trying to put you off doing a research-based dissertation. Really, I'm not. I think it's massively important that all students have the option to do a research-based dissertation, to craft their own study and collect their own data, because that can be an amazing transformative experience. And if you're thinking, 
I still want to do a research-based dissertation and I am determined. Knock yourself out, go for it, that is fantastic. However, just be aware, it's not the only option open to you. So if a research-based dissertation doesn't really sound like it's your jam, you have an alternative. And if you fail to get ethical approval for your research-based study, you have an alternative. If something happens in your life that means you're not gonna be able to finish the research-based study you started, you have an alternative. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you would like more dissertation advice and tips on topics like this and this and this, and all of these become a Degree Doctor Insider, then go sign up for my email list. When you sign up for my email list right now, you will get these lovely freebies that are going to be super helpful in keeping your dissertation on track. The link is in the description. And I will see you back here soon for more dissertation tips.